Winston was doing everything he could because of the situation I was in, but even he had warned me that if I lost my job, that meant I wouldn't be able to help Erica once she was able to leave the hospital. As long as I was smart about this, not only would I be able to keep my job, but I would also be able to take care of her the way she deserved. She's afraid to be alone, I finally admitted to him, at a loss for words as to what the right thing to do at this point was. I know I have to return to work in order to keep my job, but I don't want to leave her alone. She's already under a lot of stress, and Dr. Johnson has already warned me that any additional stress could keep her here even longer. What am I supposed to do? Ethan began to smile as he let go of my shoulders, much to my surprise. You just did it, he told me, his eyes shining with pride. You told me what was going on and asked for my assistance. That's all you needed to do for me to get involved. I was initially perplexed as I considered his words, but after some thought, I realized what he meant. Is there anything you can do to assist? I asked, with hope rising in my chest. As he spoke, Ethan nodded his head in response. I'll talk to Susan about having her or Cassie come over to take turns looking after her so you can go back to work, he explained. He motioned for me to remain silent as he continued, seeing the look of disappointment on my face. I know you want to be the one to look after her, but it's for your own good. If you lose this job, you won't be able to do anything more for her than you already have. I want you to talk to her the next time she's awake, and ask her if she's okay with Susan or Cassie coming in to spend time with her while you return to work. Tell her that when you're not on the clock, she can come back and spend as much time as she wants with her, but that you need to go back to work in order to help her out of the situation. I knew, as much as I hated to admit it, that Ethan was correct. We planned to have Erica come stay with me once she was fully recovered so she could piece her life back together piece by piece. Even though she had only recently exited a clearly abusive relationship, she had already expressed her desire to be my little again, but I told her that she needed to get better before I could do anything. However, if she did become my little, I need a way to support and care for her, regardless of what happened and I already knew that a fight with someone like Avery Bratson wouldn't be cheap. The best thing I could do was return to work so that I could support Erica when she decided what she wanted to do. Even though I didn't want to leave her alone for a second, Ethan was offering me the best choice I had, and I knew I had to take it. Very well, I agreed reluctantly as I returned my older brother's smile. When she wakes up, I'll go and talk to her. I'm not going back to work until I talk to her. Do you think that's reasonable? Ethan paused for a moment before nodding in agreement. Yes, he said, a small smile spreading across his face. That gives me the opportunity to speak with Susan and Cassie about when they'll be able to sit with Erica while you're at work. Don't forget that I need to talk to Hunter to make sure he's okay with Cassie assisting us. As we discussed the details for looking after Erica... I felt a wave of relief wash over me, and I knew that everything would be fine in the end. All I had to do was wait. 